Hello! In today's part, we're going to take out the new email builder to a test drive. Welcome to Joy's Marketing Automation Show. I'm Joy Keller, your host. Have you tried the new Modic MGML template builder already? It's almost perfect by now, thanks to the great coders at the Modic community. In today's part, we're going to learn everything about the email coder. We will understand even how padding borders and margins work. We will learn about sections and columns and blocks and how to use them for your newsletter. We are going to talk about tricks as well, what you have to watch out for when you shape your own design. This will cover an individual newsletter creation. So if you'd like to more about how to create templates for money for later usage for your business or other businesses, you should check out a course on my website. Let's dig in. First, I would like to talk to you a little bit about the difference between these uh, different templates. So I have in my install, I have a couple of templates, uh, but the real difference is between these ones here. So let's see together why. There is a language difference how data is stored between these, uh, in, in these templates. So these first two are actually different than the second two. These first two will work with an HTML and these here, the, the ones which you create as MGML templates, will be working with an MGML language and that will be translated into an HTML. Um, this might sound a little bit weird that you have two different standards, but that's how it works right now. So let me show you what this exactly means. So let's look into this one. This is in code mode. What happens if I, oops, sorry, I went to the wrong one. Let's go to the blank first. So if you are going to the blank one, this is very simple. Uh, it's, a, it's a very simple email builder. So you can just drag and drop and everything will work just out of the box. Yeah. So absolutely no problem. You can resize the pictures and you can make beautiful templates. But how is the data stored here? The data is stored in HTML. This is HTML language. Now HTML doesn't let you to create so flexible and easy to to change templates. You can make your email here, but that's not a template. You won't be able to just drag and drop certain items very easily. Almost, but not 100%. So let's look at another template. And this is why we are creating templates uh, for, for Modic. And by we, I mean it can be you as well. Um, if I go here in the builder, this is a ready template. It's written in, uh, in, in, uh, in MGML. And if I can move these things around and it, they will actually be totally fine. They will work really nicely and uh, and everything will be working. So if I, okay, before I didn't move the image, but you know, if you move things around, like the whole thing you can move or you can move just a, just a block somewhere, everything is beautifully working because it's stored in two languages at the same time. It's stored in MGML and also translated to the equivalent of HTML. And that, that's valid all the MGML created templates. If you go for, for this one here, it will be only saved in one language, only in HTML. So that means it's harder to change later. Normally you wouldn't see this, but this is the reason why you want to create MGML templates. Uh, if you go to my website, there is a course for that where you can learn everything about MGML templates. So if I add something here, these three blocks here will be created as HTML. If I go here and do the same thing, it will keep the MGML language. So this one here will be saved as MGML blocks. Okay, so you can see here the MGML markup. Again, in this tutorial, I'm not going to go into very super details. I have a tutorial on my website. You can go through that and it teaches you how to use these things from completely. But the point is that when you create a new template, you should understand which way you want to go. You want to just, you know, create one ad hoc template right now. And by template, I mean email. Uh, you want to create just one right now and use it and later maybe create another one, completely different one or make little changes. Or you want to give someone the, the opportunity to change all the elements and drag and drop these elements. For that, you would need an MGML language template. Okay, 
Okay, let's go further. Let's speak a little bit about how these templates are built up and how um, a good email uh, is actually organized into different sections. So if you click here, you can see the section divider as well. And we can understand a little bit more how this is built up. So normally you have sections, which is pretty much the lines uh, of, the, of that section here. So you can see these lines here that's like a line in a in a in a in a newsletter and in this line you can have multiple columns you see it's written here so these are the columns you can use so if I want to have like a three column thing I just come here and then I have three content blocks this will just this will here create in MGML language that would be a section and a column as well this would be one section with three columns you can have also one section with one columns and one section with two columns so I want to a little bit look at that what these columns means that we would understand how this newsletter is built up. So let me show you what I mean by that. So the email consists of sections. These are the the lines like you would take a table and then you have different lines in them. So these are the 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 horizontal units of the email. Let's put it this way of the design. In these sections, we're putting in different things. Uh, the, the sections will have columns inside. This helps us that in that certain line or horizontal uh, structure, there is another structure which can be broken down into, into multiple parts. And the cool thing is that you can resize these parts so you can have like a 25, 75 division as well if you want. But the point is that the sections always contain the columns. And then these columns will have the blocks. The blocks are those parts the blocks are those units which you can find on the right side of the builder I'm going to show you in one moment and these blocks can be so you can have multiple blocks in one column so like here in the bottom you see you have a section which consists of two columns and in these two columns you have two blocks so the email builder is divided by two sections here but actually it should be three but this section this here is it contains the columns and the sections as well because when you choose one of these units one of these uh, these these um, these columns here the one column design element let's say um, when you choose it you will get your section and the column already this is the two column version you will get one section with two columns you can see it here and these are the blocks what you can freely push into your design to enrich your newsletter so basically it's cool because with MGML language you're supposed to have these three different layers but you only have two which is kind of cool it will uh, create for you some problems later I will tell you what but that's just that's just how the, the the builder is don't really worry about that but I will show you what to watch out for now let's go through the the main user interface first so here these three icons you can change the the different views you can see the desktop tablet and mobile view with these arrows you can jump undo and redo your actions this here will turn on the lines so you know actually where to put stuff this is really cool you can have full screen here this one here will show you the code in our case I am building a, 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 an email with HTML code like I explained it before what it means you can edit the whole code here if you wish to and this is for uh, decoration uh, specific to that element so you can change like basically edit the element here and here you can switch back to the sections and close the app so when you look at something like this here this this selection then we are selecting just that box and you can see it because it says box now I go here I have the same thing it's a box what is selected if you click here then you go out to the next box this is essentially the section here which contains that box and this is really cool because sometimes you have lines so close to each other that it's really hard to select the right one so you just click on this up and then it selects the box above it so you, it selects the the unit which is including this previous one 
and you can move these around so this is the way to to move your things around and you can also duplicate them in this case everything is in this one probably so that's why it's duplicating everything so if I wanna if I wanna just duplicate under each other I would have to create another section for that you can create a new section just by dragging and dropping it into an area these are there are uh, this double the the triple and this one to I mean to to three to seven sections and later you can put different kind of contact into these I um, mean content into these uh, section sections what you create for your newsletter it's pretty self-explanatory these are the different blocks you can use right now this might change in fact it's possible that you have another type of install with raw and hero it depends what version you have this is now the latest one I pulled it's there is a chance that in the future there will be different uh, new blocks added to to the email builder so let's have a full section here and let's uh, start with the buttons so that's how the button looks like each of these uh, blocks can have their own properties and you can open the style manager and this menu here will be always uh, different based on the block you try to edit so for example here I can add a title an href and I can also edit the text so I can do that this is um, this is a link which points at google.com and by double clicking on it I can also edit this button so I can say button 51 whatever so I go over it again and I can choose the target should be new window or not I can change the size of it the dimensions are always referring to this box so I can say this is 200 pixel for example then it's gonna be a lot wider the height can be also different so I can make like 50 pixel you can also use percentage for that and then there is margin and padding and I will I will cover this in in, in the next uh, part of this tutorial because that's very specific uh, to anything which which has some kind of alignment let's go through the blocks first so this is the this is the the button let's go back to the blocks the divider is pretty simple it's just a line again you can change the size size of it here so you can have a divider which is 50 pixel and then it looks like a gray area and usually these are quite small so maybe 5 pixel or something again I can duplicate it and then I can move them around as well if I want to put them into different places obviously I should I shall put it in that places where it matters because otherwise it won't be visible like for example here okay okay so let's go back and look at the text it's just a simple text so you have this editor where you can edit the text itself the cool thing is that you can also use dynamic content here so I mean not dynamic content sorry but tokens so you can say for example uh, I want to do um, hello and then have the first name then you would choose it from here first name I'm sorry so you check here what's the first name the user's first name here and then it will automatically insert the right text this here the text section gives you a header in some other email editors they have this separately so they usually have a header block we have it together because the header is very often followed by another block you can delete this so if you just want the header that's fine too and this is also what you see is what you get editor in terms of this area here the size of the and and the font and everything is always typical for that block so I have to go here and change it I can change the typography I can change the font and I can change weight how, how bold it is how uh, uh, was the letter spacing so I can make it more uh, wide from each other here I change the line height so this can be um just let's do it this way that we go through the line height and you can change the line height as well so 
I go to this section here, go to typography, and now the line height, that means the difference between the, the lines. Normal means it's approximately like this, but you can have it bigger, so... You should always have it bigger as your font, otherwise it's pressed together. So if you have font 16, it should be at least 18. Then you have a little bit bigger one as usual, but you can go more. So this is how you pull the text apart can also have alignment here and different text decoration so from superscript strike through and underline and the font style italic or regular and you can also have the vertical alignment so it should it sit in the base or it should be somehow higher base meaning the bottom of that certain area and you can also deal with borders I'm gonna um, cover that a little bit later. You can also set text shadow if you know what, what is that and how it works. I'm not going to go into that. Um, there is really big depth to this, to this, um, to this topic. So I, I won't be able to cover everything. But pretty much if you choose any of these blocks by clicking here, you are able to change any, uh, any um, attributes of that certain area. Okay, let's go further. What else we have here? That was the text section. We also have the image. So when you open an image, um, let's choose something from here. I'm going to go with this one here. Let's say this picture. If you choose an image, you have a little bit different settings here because with images, it's a complete different story how to position them. I'm going to cover that just in a moment in the next um, part of this tutorial but you have the same ability the same um, you know background coloring and, and, and uh, size changes you can make okay a code is just a formatted text it's just a different format for you this is a link simply like this obviously you can have links here as well so you can just have a link like this And there is also so-called link block. And for me, that doesn't work, so I won't be able to show you. I don't even know if it's going to make it into the final version. So the grid item is multiple uh, columns with multiple content. So you have an image, for example, like this, and you have a high, uh, header and you have a text. Now, here, this function, this little arrow comes really handy because you can move out from that you can move up and up and up and eventually grab the whole box like this. So if I want to delete this, then I would delete the whole thing. Otherwise, if I don't go up enough, so I just delete this, then I have some stuff left. So I'm going to have to delete that separately. It's again, it's coming back to that. Remember when I was giving these different framed frames? So I was talking about this here, actually. Okay. Um, that was the grid items. The list items is very similar, just they are under each other. And you also have the dynamic content. And this is actually really cool. This is typical to Modic. You can have some kind of content saying default. Default content. And you can have another content, which is only for the ladies. So if you have something like gender, of course, I don't have that. So what do I have here? I have a double opt-in. So if double opt-in equals yes, then this will be visible. Sorry, ladies. I'm going to do only for double opt-in. This text here is only visible if this is valid, this question here, this filter. And the default is visible for, for others, basically. If you don't have any variation, then the default will be visible. Okay, so that's the dynamic content. So pretty much, so so much I wanted to say about the the, um, the builder itself, the different um, blocks and uh, attributes, and I I would like to de devote a little bit more time to this here. What is a margin? What is padding? What is a border? Because this information is the trickiest if you deal with emails. And, and in general, with, with, if you deal with HTML, because that decides 
how your images and your 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 whole email will look like so stay with me I'm gonna continue in just a moment so let's talk about this padding margin border thing um, normally you would not learn this but um, this tool gives you more control over your content so you actually can fine-tune your images which means you really have to understand what the setups are but don't be afraid these are just four things four concepts which I'm going to show you now actually it's really two um, divided into four parts and you will understand everything how images are dealt with uh, in the internet world so we have dimensions these are the sizes of the picture so how wide it is how high it is this is basically what you have to know how wide and, and high your 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 picture really is that's that's the most important thing then you have padding padding is the distance between the borders of the image um, inside of the center of the image so how small you wanna resize your image uh, altogether margin is like a, is like an area where you don't outside of your image so that's everything which is around your image and border is how thick the border of your image is but I actually can explain it to you a lot better so let's say you have a picture this one has certain uh, width certain height if we add padding to it then what happens is that the picture itself the our content gets smaller and the padding is the amount how much smaller the picture actually got so in this case if we if we set up the padding everywhere let's say 10 pixels then we have something like this because this 10 pixels is eating into the picture okay so if we add border to it that's like it's like a frame yeah so this picture has, has a border actually so that's how the, the, the border should be understood we have the padding here and then we have the border most of the time the borders are zero uh, so you set everywhere zero and you don't worry about it if you want you can also have a color for example this one has a red color here but most of the time we don't add borders to the pictures and margin is the area outside of that so you always have the padding the border and the margin for example this picture has zero everything because it doesn't have anything then we add the 10 uh, pixel padding then we add some border and if we want we can also add some margin as you can see our picture got a lot bigger so maybe the size of the picture which is actually defined in this area maybe that's let's say 500 times 800 but the actual picture is bigger because we added the border and we added the margin as well so if I want to be really uh, precise then this is how it should be understood content padding border margin okay so next time you see a picture any kind of picture on the wall you should always remember that that picture has a padding it has a frame which is the border and the margin is around it and that helps you to place the next picture on the wall because you will not put it into the margin of that picture okay so I hope you're gonna be able to use uh, padding margin and border from now on but you can just also play around with it and see what happens I would also like to talk a little bit about the mandatory fields and I'm talking about the unsubscribe text and the webview text as you can see these are added as tokens which means they start with the curly bracket then it says webview text and unsubscribe text now we we can use different tokens here for example we could also use instead of the instead of the uh, curly bracket webview text I could say curly bracket webview URL now here is the difference the webview URL will just display the URL where you click and then it brings you to the preview of this of this uh, newsletter you know sometimes you see like you don't see the pictures click here it's in a newsletter so that's the URL here if you add webview text as a token then you will see the whole expression so it will create the text saying 
um, you don't see this uh, newsletter images then click here and the URL as well so make sure you're using the right format same with the unsubscribe text as a default the unsubscribe text and I'm gonna show you in a moment where it's set will give you the text and the link as well but if you say unsubscribe URL then you will just have the URL so for example I would have something like unsubscribe here and then I have the link and the link itself would be the unsubscribe URL so this is how unsubscribe works um, let me quickly show you where you can set the text if you decide to have the whole text inserted I'm gonna show you where to set it so let's go to settings config email settings and then this is your webview text token so if you enter this having trouble reading this email click here and if you use web unsubscribe URL then it's gonna be like this no longer receive emails from us Da, 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 da. and here by the way you can also check the message so if you someone clicks on that they will just go to a page saying hey sorry to see you go and you can resubscribe if you want so that's how that goes so I think we should make a real newsletter now okay let's make our first newsletter I will do it from scratch using the blank template because the other ones already give me great opportunity to create beautiful templates I just want to show you how easy to do it from zero please remember we will end up with an HTML code so if you want to make so nice beautiful MGML templates which are later easy to edit you need to do it a little bit differently and I have a tutorial about that so if you go on my website click on all courses there's the MGML template mastery course um, and here you can read exactly how to create such a I have it's it's an hour course approximately uh, I show you step by step how to do it and it's really really simple I show you all the tricks and trips tips um, so you will be able to do this create these beautiful uh, templates which are later easier to edit but let's do our regular template here so I'm just gonna do a test here test okay and I'm gonna do uh, my test uh, segment and go to builder okay so let's make this more organized here a little bit okay so um, first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create more sections here which will later pretty much correspond to my my design the design I would like to have and I'm gonna have just the main area in my email then I'm gonna have like a double section and then I'm just gonna have some text at the bottom something like this this is pretty cool just gonna do something simple so let's start with an image actually I will not start with an image I'm gonna start with some kind of headline probably here so well I can use this text as well so I'm gonna call this retro news okay let's um, organize this text so for editing we come here and we're gonna go put this in the middle we can also change the background color if we want so we can do something I don't know white like let's do red like this but then change the font color to something lighter so we can have this contrast okay I will just leave the text here I will add some images so let's go back to the blocks and just simply pull the images here so what do you have here I have already some pre-made content let's do this one and let's another one here just nicely next to each other okay like this you see we have this line here which means these pictures are too big so how big are they let's find it out it says auto which means we have the maximum of the original size of this picture you can also turn off the lines if this is disturbing you but I want to stay into this line because that shows me the 600 width which is easier to nicely displaying into the uh, email builders 
So I can manu either manually make this smaller, like this, or I can actually say here, I want this 260 wide. But this one, I will leave auto. So it will, if I, it will r remain the, 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 the image um, will remain the same uh, structure. So you will not make it like too, too fat or too, too tall. And here we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna do a width of 60. Now we have a little bit of space so we can play with our padding. And we're gonna make on the right and the left simply five for this image and also for this. So it's a little bit more organized. Okay, I can push it out until the end if I want. It's no problem. Then I would use zero padding here but I like to have it like this right now. Okay, so here I'm just gonna add some text. Say it like this. I'm gonna do, oops, just simply some water gypsum. Okay. Okay, so let's add the button. So if I add the button here, then I will have a problem because this button cannot be moved into the middle. Why? Because the button is hanging in this section and the section's alignment will tell us where the button is. So I can put it in the middle, but then the text will be in the middle as well. So what I need to do here, I have to create another section for it, just for the button, so I can freely move it around. So I'm going to do a new section here under it. I just push the button here and then I click on the button look for the attributes and set the alignment oops sorry 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 misclicked so I choose the whole thing not the button because I want to set the alignment for the whole thing and then click here and the button will be in the middle if you want to make the button uh, different colors or different uh, uh, size you can edit here after clicking on it so let's say we would like to have the same red button and this button has a huge border with the same color oh we don't have that red I don't know what that red is so I'll just copy it here okay. like this and but we would like to make it a little bit bigger so we will go to our old fan oops sorry we will go to our old friend padding oh uh, not so much let's say five on the top 30 here 30 here and five here so this is a nice big button button um you can also change the font size i can make it 30 if i want a big one and I also wanted to show you, sometimes you have these round buttons, that's called border radius. So we're gonna give here a 20. So you see, it's it's gonna be huge uh, round edges around that button. So this is how you this is how you create the buttons. It's that simple. You can also have the text alignment uh, changed and so on. Okay, so that's done. What else we can do? Uh, yeah, we could give uh, dynamic items and links. Uh, I think you understand. I'm going to show you one more thing here regarding the footer. So for the footer, usually it's a different color just to have some kind of frame to this whole thing. And I'm going to give it... Just let's do the same, that we have some kind of framing here. And all the text should be white. So I'm going to change this to white, like this. And that's pretty much it. If I want, I can add more items to this footer. I could add, you know, more text here. I could also make that white, just to, to be consistent, font color white. Okay. And I could have here my company name and everything. So I can say Joy Company, whatever, I don't know. And but I would make this probably with smaller letters, so let's choose it. Go to font decoration and have some kind of smaller letter for that. Actually, 
the best would be to change it here okay and of course I can change the you know where the text is um, in all cases to, to to make it more like look like a footer so that's I think all you need to learn about about um, the newsletter design of course I didn't end up with a beautiful newsletter I don't think that was really the goal um, yeah I hope I covered everything if not then um, then just uh, add your questions Wow, that was pretty long. Thank you very much for staying and watching the whole piece. I hope it was useful for you. As always, I appreciate any feedback you might have. You can also come to my website, check out my new courses. I plan to enlarge that selection. If you have any ideas or any courses you would like to see, please drop me an email. You can also find me in the forums or just write an email to hello at joykeller.com. Thanks again. See you next time in two weeks. And until then, keep automating.